It's Corey and Denise from Does Lives Matter and we have a bit of a unique review to, to do. do for you today. Uh, as you've probably already seen in previous videos, we have reviewed the Airstream Nest. But since we had that as a rental for a full 12 days, a lot of our viewers are wanting more in-depth information about how we used it and the pros and cons of its use. Mm -hmm. So as Denise said, we were away for 12 nights. About four of those nights we were plugged in. We have never been hooked up to water or sewer. Um, so boondocking eight of those nights completely um, and without water and sewer for eight of those nights. And how many, how far did we go? A uh, total of about 3,500 kilometers. We went way up north. Mm -hmm. We stayed in provincial parks. Uh, we stayed in parking lots and we've stayed in RV parks. So this video is going to tell you our personal pros and cons. So they may be different for you in that everybody kind of boondocks their own style and has different priorities. And, and expectations. And expectations, yeah. is that right? So what's important to us may not be important to you and you might think we're complaining about something that is silly or we might miss something that would be important to you. So the car that we've been using to pull the 3400 pound uh, single axle Airstream Nest is a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It has 300 horse, it's six cylinder. I'm not sure what the torque is on it but it is rated to pull 5,000 pounds and it had no problem pulling this unless we were pulling a big hill um, you really could almost forget that it was there. And we did pull some big hills. Uh, recently, in the last two days, there's been some 13% grades that we went up and down, and it managed it just fine. I wouldn't want to do that all day, every day, but it did manage. Also, on the trailer, there are no sway bars, and it wasn't really needed, actually. It was good. We went through heavy rain, Uh, wind, we had a side wind for most of a day, like a heavy side wind, and it, you know, you could feel it, but it wasn't throwing the car around at all. It wasn't uncomfortable at all. Overall, it was a pretty good experience towing this trailer. We want to talk about the exterior of the Airstream Nest and some pros and cons about that. Um, big pro for me, you know I love this awning and its LED lighting and how the Beaver doesn't have it, and I love it. So that's really great. The other thing that I really like is the screen door. Being that the door is on the back of the nest, having that screen door on there, and it's beautiful and seamless, but I did have a problem with that. <laughs> but I still really liked having that screen door back there. So what happened? Okay, well this is a con to this screen door. It is absolutely seamless. You don't know it's there all the time. And the con is that I spilled my wine down the screen as I rammed my face into it. <laughs> right. Just one problem? <laughs> Just one little problem with that. The other pro about the nest that I, that I think is a pro, it's built in three pieces that are bonded together. So. In order to get a leak, it would have to be one of those bonding joints, which is unlikely, um, or a, like an opening, like a window opening, a door opening, um, air conditioning opening, that could potentially have a leak, but those should be easy to fix or easy to identify and fix. Um, so I, I do like that. Yeah. A con to that, though, would be if you were to have some damage, you know, other than a surface scratch, which could, which could be buffed out or easily fixed, if you had some seri more serious damage, it could be very expensive to fix. Just because it's an all fiberglass um, structure. Yeah. So a crack in fiberglass is kind of a big deal. We didn't use the AC system on the nest, so we can't really speak to that, but we did have some pretty hot days while we were using this. And I just found that opening the vent at the top, turning the fan on, opening the windows, really allowed good ventilation and uh, cooled the trailer off very nicely. Now, I know, I have to eat crow on that, 
because I've always said that I didn't like these frameless windows that opened out like that because I didn't think they gave enough circulation. Well, they did. So there, they look good and they ventilated well. <laughs> so yeah, that was with that. The propane pr furnace uh, we thought worked really well. You know, there were times when I really wanted the heating and uh, since we were boondocking most of the time, propane was the best choice for us. We didn't use the heat pump or the heat strip as those were electrical components, so I can't really speak to those and I had heard in different forums that people had had trouble with that. I can't say. What was good was that that propane furnace heated us up nicely and quickly and I was a happy camper. This trailer is equipped with an on-demand hot water system and I think that in our minds that was a bit of a con. Uh, I thought I would like that but really it took a long time to get hot water and if you are boondocking like we were most of the time you're doing an on off shower you're trying not to use any water but you're spending most of your shower in cold water. Yeah. And sometimes when you do get hot water and you turn it back a little bit uh, it cuts off as well. So I didn't find that was the best system. I would have preferred a tank. Probably if you were it had full connections all the time the hot on-demand hot water yeah. would be great because you'd have hot water all the time but in boondocking situations not so not much sure. and we did have some experience with an on-demand hot water system that we had had in our houseboat years ago and we did find a similar issue mm -hmm. but yeah. we did have unlimited water and unlimited we did we we're yeah. floating around on a lake for yeah. that. <laughs> so let's talk about tanks and dumping um, the... that's a blue job <laughs> Here's the blue boy. Nobody likes to do it, but really it was pretty easy to do. The hose was accessible, the valve was accessible, the connection was accessible. It was relatively easy to do. A con to it though, for on this particular unit, I don't know if it's on all of them, but the outlet is kind of angled up a little bit, so you get some residual. And it seems in a combined tank like this, where you have your gray and your black together, a lot of the black stays to the end and it's not a nice situation when it doesn't all drain out and it also doesn't flush the hose out because usually you flush that with your gray. When it comes to boondocking we know a lot of people will dump their gray wherever they may be. Now that's not our personal practice but we do know that some folks do that and with this system you wouldn't really be able to do that because the black and gray are combined so you would have to have some type of blue boy system and you would have to have some type of uh, jug system to refill your tanks because they are small. So again, just a, a bit of a con in the boondocking situation. If you're hooked up, you'd be just fine. So come on into our Airstream nest. This is our Airstream nest for another day. So everything that we have is actually in here right now. And everything in here has a spot to be put away. So the pro is everything has a spot to be put away. The con is everything needs to be put away in order to function properly in here. So it's been taking some adjustment, adjustment. but we're getting it and it's not that bad. Pros and cons for the refrigerator are a few. Uh, one of the cons would be that it's a smaller refrigerator than we're used to so that meant shopping more frequently. I think it's about a 3.2 two or four cubic foot refrigerator um, and it was a bit tough to regulate for some reason it kind of was freezing stuff and then we'd find a little bit of melting and so we were having trouble regulating it but it was a pro um, very efficient because this is an electric only refrigerator and it managed off of the batteries with no problem at all we never had a problem with that um, so the other issue we had with this refrigerator, which I think was more operator error than refrigerator error, apparently these trailers shake, rattle and roll a little more than we were used to. And the beer in the fridge doesn't like that, which somehow escaped. <laughs> and we've got uh, beer all over the floor. We have beer soaked onions. We have beer soaked eggs. We have well, beer flavored everything, I guess, is the bright side. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess the other bright side is this is a pretty small floor and this is a very easy to wipe down rig. 
So I am cleaning up with the supplies that I have in a rental. Is that I think I kind of loaded the door a bit heavy and it did come open at one point and we had a spilled mess. So I think it's just uh, I needed to be a little more thoughtful about the way we packed it. But take a look inside. One more con is that the freezer is small, but again, that's what you expect in a small refrigerator. It's the way that it opens and coming out like this, I can't reach in there. I can't see in there. I don't even know what's going on in there. <laughs> so I wish it opened in a different direction that I could access it better because that's a real problem for us. Otherwise, we had a good fridge. It is a DC electric fridge too. The stove has a nice cover that allows you to use it for space if you need to and then lifts up like this. It is a two burner propane stove and I know normally um, I kind of don't like that but in a trailer this size the two burners is just fine. We um, almost exclusively only a couple times did we cook outside of the trailer just due to uh, we didn't have a barbecue and things like that. Uh, so we cooked a lot inside the trailer and it worked just fine. So it was good. Something that really impressed us in this trailer is the amount of electrical outlets and USB. You can see here just in the kitchen alone, there's two plugs and two USB. There's other USB uh, throughout the trailer and electrical, very well positioned and easy to use. These are my most favorite USB ports and there's one on this end and one on the other end because when this is a bed, this is my handy dandy nightstand that I always have to have and it's perfect for having your phone or doing any charging. Love it. This dinette is fabulous. It's big. You could seat a lot of people in here. I don't know how many people you would want in this trailer. <laughs> but it was very comfortable seating. You can relax and lounge. You can sit up to the table. The cushions are good. I mean, they look good, but they're also a nice fabric. They're really easy to clean. They're comfortable to sit on. So this, and I mean, you're surrounded by all these windows and a skylight. Like this is a wonderful dinette. Um, the table is very multifunctional. It can be small like this. It can open up, let me show you, like this. And there's another one of these on this size. So you can you can move this around easier to make it easier to get in or however you're sitting or whatever you want to do. You can make it bigger, you could make it smaller. So we we really liked this dinette a lot. The other thing that I want to talk about while I'm sitting here is these great windows have great window coverings. These are very uh, nicely insulated, covered. Uh, window coverings and they're on these little sliders and you can slide them back and forth and they do wrap around and even the center one zips up so you can really cover these windows if you feel you need to we don't we've only actually covered these windows one time since we've had it the con about this is that these little plastic things that are in this track get stuck easily and you kind of have to pull and wrench and inch them along. <sighs> Over multiple years of use and if people are opening and closing every day and every night, I could see that those getting broke are becoming a problem. Um, for us, it was just fine because we leave them open. The lighting in the Airstream nest has been very adequate. You've got quite a bit of under cabinet and you've got some in the front as well as back here. It lights everything, all that you need. When these are off, there's also a hidden LED light strip that changes colors and everything. Now we use the light strip, but we didn't do the color features. Um, so I can't speak to the colors, but it's a very nice subtle lighting that almost leaves the whole trailer with a bit of a glow and it's really unique and I really liked it. Countertops, always an important topic for me when we're reviewing an RV and for a 16 foot trailer, this has countertop. 
it's got small amount of space back here around the fridge or around the stove and the sink but it's got this expansive space over here so I mean we just use this for everything sometimes our computers are charging here sometimes we're using this for prep sometimes this is where our bathroom things would go like this is just totally a multi-surface huge countertop and i loved it let's talk about the sink uh this is a, a decent sink and we all know that i love having the sink covered so that i have extra countertop space the problem here is not with the cover it's with the tap this tap is so low that there's very little space. So if I'm using this as countertop space and I need to get some water or something, there's so little space here to put something under and gather water to do the next thing with. So this tap just simply needs to be taller. Then once you take this out, you do have a decent sized sink. Yes, it's only a single, but that's fine. We're in a small trailer, remember? This is a good sink. The problem is, again, my tap doesn't swivel. So we're boondocking and every time I turn this tap on, it runs directly down the drain. So I'm constantly worried about too much water coming out and ending up in the drain and in the tanks that I haven't really used as well as I could have. We have some other sink issues in this trailer, but I'll get to those in a minute. Now I want to talk about storage. And for this small trailer, I can't say enough about the storage. Look at this closet. This closet has room for hanging. We put all our bedding in here. There was an upper that we didn't even need. We've got all our shoes in a lower, like everything's out of the way. It's not in front of the door and there's more room in here for more stuff easily. Uh, everybody keeps asking us about this cabinet underneath the microwave and I just want to show it to you. It is not a cabinet. It is where your fuse box is and your battery turn off and things like that. And that's okay because <laughs> We have a lot of storage elsewhere. So this is a drawer. This is a drawer. This is a door opened up. So we've got clothes. We've got glasses. We've got more clothes uh, over here. I'll open this one for you is deep good storage. We got a lot of stuff in there. Food, liquor, clothes, bathroom stuff, computer stuff, all kinds of stuff. Over here, more drawers and another door. We've got food, we've got utensils, we've got plates and things. And then under the sink is more storage again, but it's not quite as deep on the bottom. So dishes, pots and pans, room for your garbage can, all that kind of stuff. Up, if you go up, you'll see there are two on both sides of the trailer two storage compartments with doors. Now, there is a con to these. First of all, for us, they're kind of high, but I do have clothes and stuff in here and I didn't use this one at all. What I'm having a problem with here, and it's just a little detail, is that the security to close, hold these closed is this screw system. So you, you have to unscrew this little knob. Keep screwing. Yep, I'm still unscrewing. Almost there. Oh, it's out. Now, what am I going to do with this? It's out. I want to use my cabinetry. I guess I got to find a place to put it, so I'll set it here. But the reality is that if this is if you're not in motion for quite some time, maybe a week or so, that's probably going to end up getting lost. And okay, now I can open these up and that's great. But when it comes time to go again and I need to secure that, I'm going to need to find this. And it's just reality. People are people. We're living in a small space. I would worry that this would get lost. The other issue that I have is I know Airstream is special without a doubt. I agree. We don't need to recreate the wheel here. <laughs> there are far better latch 
and locking systems for cabinets than that. I think they could do better. For more storage even, you can underneath this whole dinette, if you look under, there are compartments that you can get at. Now, we did not utilize these because we just simply didn't need to. We had enough space for all of our stuff, but they're there if you were gonna be in the Airstream nest more. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the bathroom. The big pro being that it has a bathroom and we wouldn't have rented anything without a bathroom. So that's a great thing. A con of this bathroom is that you have a very large toilet on a very large pedestal, which makes a very large distance from the floor to this seat. Some of you may ask, why is that a problem? Others know why that's a problem. Now I know this is a little personal, but I'm just going to show you the procedure to make this work. So if we go in here, and we put a foot here, and we push here, and we swing here, where there's a will, there's always a way to make something work. It just, I'm not sure it needed to be this way. So I'll leave the rest of the process to your imagination, but it's not real easy with the foot flush way up here. So if you were a taller person, you'd probably be able to sit in the toilet better. Yes. But would a taller person really want to be in this bathroom? Um, I, you know what? Actually, the ceiling height is pretty good in here. Um, it could be. You wouldn't want to be. Yeah, it's manageable, I think, with a taller person. How about a wider person? That could run into some challenges, possibly. In the shower, I just want to point out how much actual shower space there is between the toilet and the side here. We found this adequate for our showering needs. The shower fixture was a good one and it has a, uh, a thing so you could turn it off and on uh, without having to turn the tap on and off so we liked that and it had good spray we were happy with that the mirror is okay and then you come down you have a little shelf and you have a cabinet and again this is not sealed as good as I think it could be but it does give you a space to put some of your things this is what we consider the biggest area that Airstream could make a change to improve the nest. These are of no use to us. This trailer desperately needs a sink in the bathroom. Many other RVs with wet baths have small sinks. They could easily put one right across here and give us a place to wash our hands and brush our teeth. The biggest problem that Corey and I have had since we've been in this trailer is that when you're boondocking, you're not doing dishes all of the time. So we have the sink, which has some dishes in it, and now we're in the bathroom and now we're out to the kitchen sink to try and wash our hands or to try and brush our teeth. It just isn't a good flow and it's not easy. Having a very small sink in this wet bath would have changed the experience for us. We love this dinette, but the con of it is making it into a bed. Now I want to say that we would not choose the other floor plan with the made up bed because we use the dinette so much and we really do like the dinette. But the making down into a bed has been a really big challenge for us. So we want to show you how to do it because we actually looked on YouTube to see if we were doing something wrong. <laughs> we've been trying to fit fitted sheets on here and it's really tough. We really enjoyed our time, our 12 days in the nest. Honestly, it got us more attention than walking through a kindergarten field trip. <laughs> but um, for our long-term travels, uh, I really do think 
that um, we do already have the right rig for us. We do. So we'll stick with the beaver for now. But you know, it's always off in some other place. So we'll continue to rent and use other RVs and different types so that we can share that information with you. And you know, we always say there's a right RV out there for everyone. So we're just going to keep testing them out until we find something different or we stick with the beaver. <laughs> We hope that this little more in-depth video has given you some extra information with which to make your next RV buying choices. If you have any specific questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And uh, give us a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Cheers, Cheers to, to Airstream. Airstream.